I'm David from Levika Photography and today I'm going to show you how to process 35 millimeter film through your camera by making a box. It's going to be an exciting day. So Noah had some questions about how he should digitize this since the scanner's dead. So we're going to make something. So it's DIY. Let's get to it. So we're going to make our transparency shooting device out of um, black foam core and so I already pre-cut these 4x6 and I like 4x6 because you can fit different lenses in it uh, you can go bigger it doesn't really matter we're just creating a shaded box and this actually isn't going to be attached to the camera or anything so if you want to go bigger 6x6 you can or whatever but this is just for 35 millimeter film so that is the goal so here is our trusty foam core pre-cut and then I've got a blank piece of 35 millimeter film and this is the key ingredient right here the donut box so basically what we got to do is we're going to create um, the actual film holder out of this box and the reason why is because it's fairly dense cardboard and we can build it up in layers but yet it's thin and um, It'll, it'll just make more sense when we start putting this together. So this is what the box looks like in a blow away view. Each side is six inches square, nothing really fancy, six inch front. Uh, we've got a film window here that's just slightly larger than the film area that we're capturing. And then we've got these rails, and these are the most important part of it. These are actually what hold the film down. So when it's fully assembled, it'll look more like this. And now you can see how these rails come into play. The film opening is slightly larger than the, uh, the image that we're actually taking on the film. That way we've got some leeway to crop it in. And right here you can see how these film rails actually look. And so this cardboard has to be really thin because these are actually what's going to be making that film stay flat. It's very simple yet very, very effective. So I chose the donut box because of the dense cardboard. And this really means that you're going to get a really solid edge to slide the film against and on top of that it's thin and rigid so cutting this up this is actually going to be the film holder the part that goes in front of the box what I'm doing is creating four equal shapes that will be all the same size and length and these will actually be the film holder part and then I'm going to measure the film to figure out how far apart they need to be and then I'm going to create a window in another square that I can cut the window out of and then glue the film rails to that window and again this is going to be the front of the box making the film window just slightly larger than the actual image on the film but in this case Noah requested that he get the uh, the sprocket holes from the film actually in the shot so that way he can get those in there too. So we got to make it just a little bit bigger for those sprocket holes. I'm making it a point to use the lip of the box uh, as the film edge because it's a much cleaner cut than I can actually do with the razor blade since the film actually has to slide across it. The first two pieces I'm gluing down are actually just slightly wider than the film strip itself. And I have to double check my width because this is the part that the film actually slides through. Another set of rails on top of this will actually hold the film down against the window. But again, we want to be able to show those sprockets, so it's got to be really close and really tight.
Now it's just a matter of putting the foam core together to get the body of the box done. So why go through the process of making a box and just not shoot this on a, a light table like some of you other guys do? Uh, the reason why is you get light leaks that happen all around it and when you're shooting something bright it actually reflects into the lens and lowers the contrast a little bit. So to get the most out of film we want to get it in its the darkest setting that we possibly can. But why spend a ton of money? So just make a box. I cover the inside with gaffer's tape just to make sure that there's no back reflection happening in the lens and that everything's super dark. And now to test fit the film in this to make sure that everything actually slides well and that the rails are actually holding the film down. Although this is a little trickier because Noah really wanted those sprockets in there. And voila, our box is done. Ooh, fancy. When it comes to scanners, the problem that people don't realize with scanners is right now you have what, the Epson 850 Pro? Yeah, yeah so that's, that's the newest scanner. So when I gave up on scanners, I had the Epson 750 Pro. That was my last scanner. And before that, I had a Microtech 900 and a Microtech 800, and then an Epson 6 something before that. So I've had a lot of flatbed scanners over the years, and it was kind of funny because um, when the uh, 5D Mark II came out is when we first started experimenting with this, and it was just so much better that I got rid of that, scan that scanner 10 years ago. But the crazy thing is, they still sell the same scanner. It's the exact same scanner. Uh, it has a few minor upgrades done to it, but it's the same body. It's the same film holders you're using the same shit to scan your photos as I did 10 years ago. So, you know, the thing is, it, it just isn't that sharp, it isn't that good, there just isn't enough dynamic range. What we have is we've got a light on a white wall. We're far away from the wall. The more distance you get, the less specs you get, which makes this a lot better. There's a lot less cleanup shooting it this way than there is versus scanning it. So you don't get nearly as much dust. So all we do is we got this box just sitting here on a table and then I've got my camera on a book. We've got the new Leawa 100 millimeter macro. And so we focus this in and this is what we get on the back. So anyway, right now we're at F2.8. We're focused in. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this down to F8. Now after this, you'll be able to just slide the film through and shoot every image and it'll go really quickly. But anyway, just for this, we're gonna go ahead and shoot it. Now we're gonna have to see what that looks like. All right, so here's our image uh, brought into Photoshop. So basically from here, uh, I need to rotate it, and then now we need to flip it and turn it back into a positive. And uh, this is actually pretty easy to do. So before I do anything, I give a little bit of contrast just to see where it's at. And then from here you go to Tone Curve, and then all you do is just swap these two bars and bring them up like that. And then you can also pull these in just like a levels adjustment when you're actually in Photoshop to get it closer to where you want. And so this is actually what I was looking for, believe it or not. It may look kind of strange right now, but it'll make more sense here in a second. But anyway, from here, if we go back to the main screen, 
uh, I can bring my exposure down, but now that we reverse the tonal curve, the exposure actually goes the other way. So by bringing my exposure down, I need to make it brighter, which is, that just baffles me. That's just so strange. But anyway, from here, let's say we bring it down one stop. Um, from here, I can use my white balance picking tool and just pick the film because this is actually supposed to be white on the edges and this will get you close to where you want to be and then you can do minor adjustments from here um, so in this case I want to go just a touch touch warmer so probably somewhere around there I'm guessing or you can use white balance picker tool again do it on like say the shoe and then decide that you didn't want that, you want it to be just a hair cooler, you can bring it back just a hair. It's the only way I can describe it, to like right there. So to me this looks pretty good. Now, the one thing that you have to understand, the reason why this is better than a scanner, is the best film shot on the best 35mm camera body. So let's say a 50 millimeter Sumalux uh, lens shot on a Leica body. Uh, that is the sharpest that you can possibly shoot, 35 millimeter, in my opinion. Now, that is the equivalent of 12 megapixels when it comes to digital. So if you have a 24 megapixel digital camera with a macro lens, by today's standards, which is much sharper than that uh, Sumalux is now, uh, you should be able to pick up every grain and not have an issue. It just doesn't matter on 35 millimeter. So what, doing it this way, you have so much more dynamic range than you would if you were actually trying to uh, scan it in. So scanners have four stops. This camera, the Sony a7R 3 has 14 stops. So you just get a much cleaner image, a lot better color, and you can go from there. And you can change the color profiles, do whatever you want here. But I just wanted to get you to this point, that way you knew what you were up against. Now if I go in here, I can turn my noise reduction off and then zoom in again. And now you can see that I can really tighten in on every little tiny grain that's actually in the film. And you, you just can't get past that point. There's no way to do it. Um, in this case, I don't really want to see the grain. So we'll just soften it up, call it good. Um, maybe that's a little too soft. We'll try that at 22. There we go. But now you've got that vintage look, that that true 35 millimeter film feel. Now from here in Photoshop, you can open it up and, and adjust it however you want. Uh, you can actually even just go image, adjust, auto tone, just to bring it up if you really want. Uh, as kind of a quick fix. That actually looks pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now here's another perfect example of why this works so much better than a scanner. So Noah, my assistant, who's 20 now, found this in his drawer, and this is um, probably 12-year-old film, so I guess he was like 8 years old, 7 years old when this was taken. And it had been heat soaked and all kinds of things. He went and got developed and it came back green. So anytime you see this, uh, there, this film's been through some serious heat, so not a good thing. Probably happened when they were moving or something. Who knows? Anyway, can you save this photo? Well, let's try. So, super fast. Let's just go in and um, invert this thing and see what we get. Oh! Oh! Ah. So that's what we end up with. Um, not too exciting. And then from here, we can just hit the white balance tool, and we've got something there. So let's go ahead and rotate it, bring it back here, hit the white balance tool again on a better spot. And I think we can actually save this. Now, typically with a scanner, you wouldn't even bother with this. It'd just be too much of a hassle. But in this case, we bring that exposure down, because remember, again, it's the opposite. And then we'll go ahead and... Um, bring our whites or blacks down, which is the opposite of what we usually do, and then bring our whites the other way. Now we actually have something that we can work with. Now to take this even one step farther, 
Um, we can build the contrast up in it and pull the exposure down just a little bit more. So that's kind of what we get. I'm going to leave this a little brighter and I'll show you why here in a second. But from here, if we want to go black and white with it, this would be an easy cleanup. Easy, easy, easy. So from here, I can, I'm going to leave this overexposed. And the reason why is because I want to multiply the layer once I get it into Photoshop. So from here, I'm just going to duplicate this layer really quick. And then I am going to go to multiply. And you can see from here, and then image, I'm going to merge that, and then go to merge it. Then go to image, adjust, levels. And then all I'm going to do is bring the levels back to where they should be. And now we have a really great vintage black and white photo that we can totally recover. So again, this is exactly why uh, using digital cameras for shooting exposed film is so much better than a scanner. So anyway, there you go. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you found it informative. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me a like and share it and whatever. But anyway, subscribe to my channel for more information like this. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.